You thought the day was over? Me too, but it's not. Welcome back, curious sailors. Once again, it's Martina from Argentina, from Royal Caribbean's Serenade of the Seas. And this is my personal account of responding to La Sufrier's volcanic state of alert on the island of St. Vincent, working as a broadcast technician here on board. My job is to capture these difficult but memorable moments for posterity. If you haven't watched it already, please don't miss out the first part of this vlog where I showed you all the initial preparations for some potential evacuations after the ship being closed off for a year. On this video, I will update you on what happened after I finished my first vlog, or so I thought that I was calling it a day. On the night of April 9th, after some eruptions started happening on La Sofria volcano. But before I dive into the footage, I really wanna give you some scientific data and to continue to provide some hopefully reliable information of what is going on in the country. So a warm shout out to Andy, a guest services manager that came on board to assist us with the process of immigration of his fellow countrymen and women who confirmed this information with me because we both care about letting you guys know what really is going on. I explained that humanitarian efforts are usually more complex than you can imagine. We're not talking about people running for their lives and just getting on a boat escaping from lava. We're talking about immigration processes, there has to be proper accounting of passengers, since there is still laws in place. And remember, we already debunked that no Royal Caribbean was not denying unvaccinated people on board. The only requirement was to get quick antigen tests, and it was actually the local government who was selecting the people that would be relocated. We didn't even know how many people we would be getting on board. That number varied so much along just the first day. Finally, of course, the cherry on top was the ongoing pandemic. Our medical team of only three people had to deploy enough PPE, personal protective equipment, masks and full hazmat suits to keep the crew and our passengers safe. Because of course, an outbreak on board would be the last thing that we needed. To make it even more clear, it was the local government that decided not to evacuate anyone up to this point. We simply relocated 130 workers headed to Canada. If this was a life-threatening situation, you can imagine we would have evacuated families, small children and the elderly. But that's why we were there, on standby and ready to embark as many people as it would be needed depending on the magnitude of these volcanic eruptions that cannot be anticipated. I will leave you on screen some scientific and humanitarian accounts that you can follow. As my fellow crew member Andy was very smart to point out, the 1979 eruption, whose anniversary was taking place, was far more deadly because precisely of the lack of scientists in the area and communication technology that allows people to be informed to the minute of which areas need to be evacuated. Actually, the main challenge right now for the community is the sulfuric ash in the air. N95 masks were suggested. And for one moment there, I think we can be relieved that masks are something that are widely used right now and accessible. Also, the ash can become really heavy and slippery when it gets wet, being a possible hazard for for people moving around, especially in their cars. Of course, now the main need is for water, since of course the fresh water supplies come from inland streams that are currently, yes, boiling. But lastly, on a positive note, although ash can be really damaging at the first sight on nature, remember, quoting Andy, she replenishes herself, and at the end of the day, ash will turn soil incredibly fertile for the future. You know guys that I always like to, with a positive note, nature and life will keep on thriving. Okay guys, sorry for that long introduction. I hope it really put everything into context so we can go on into the footage of the night of April 9th and the following days as I keep updating you on how the situation developed.
Good luck.